In this section of the bridge, and we're now going to move on to quadratic equations and look at the very basics of them. In the next video, or a couple of videos after this, we'll look at some of the more harder instances of quadratics and where they appear. Throughout your studies at A level, you'll constantly come across quadratics, and again, it's a skill that you just have to get used to, and it does become more enjoyable as you go. The general form of a quadratic will be ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. That is the form that we want it in. A quadratic equation is an equation where the highest power of x is an x squared. So for example, if we had 2x plus 1, so y is equal to 2x plus 1, this is a linear equation because the power on the x is just 1. If we had y is equal to x cubed, plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. This is a cubic because the third power is the highest power on the x's. If we have the f of x is equal to x squared plus x minus 12, then this is a quadratic. And I've used function notation here, the f of x. Often we'll see y is equal to the f of x where this is what we call a function of x. So this is a quadratic equation. Whilst we're here, we can look at this as a quadratic expression. And the way we go about quadratic expressions in terms of factoring ready to solve is the following method. This is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So the a term is just one. The b term is positive 1 and the c term is negative 12. For us to factor this, we look for the two numbers that multiply to give the c term, which is negative 12, and add to give the b term. So let's look at the numbers here. We've got to make minus 12. So what two numbers can multiply to give negative 12? 1 times 12. We'll think about the positives and the negatives shortly. 1 times 12, 2 times by 6, and 3 times by 4. So which of those two numbers will add in some form? One's going to have to be positive and one's going to be negative for us to have a negative. Which are going to be the ones that we choose? Hopefully you've spotted that this one is going to be the case. All we need to set up now are two brackets. We put an x in the front of both. So the two numbers that multiply to give negative 12 and add to give 1 are going to be plus 4 and minus 3. If you want to check that that works, expand it back out. x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 12. And you can see by collecting the terms in the middle, x squared plus x minus 12. So that is now an expression. It becomes an equation when we set this to some value. Setting it to zero means I can now solve this. What this says is x plus 4 is equal to 0, or x minus 3 is equal to 0. If x plus 4 is equal to 0, all we've got to write is x plus 4 is equal to 0. Solve it in a linear way, so x is equal to negative 4. Or, if x minus 3 equals 0, then add in 3 to both sides, x is equal to positive 3. So we have two solutions to the quadratic equation where x squared plus x minus 12 is equal to 0. If we look at this graphically, what we're going to have is the following scenario. A parabola is how we graph a quadratic equation. A parabola is symmetric, and if we look at this one, we've got a solution where x is going to be negative 4, which is going to be here, and x is going to be positive 3. The graph will look symmetric about its minimum point or its axis of symmetry, which we'll look at later. And we draw it like so. With the x squared value being positive, we open upwards. So this is the point 3, 0. And this is the point negative 4, 0. And then this point down here, although not drawn to scale, is 0, minus 12, where we're crossing the axis. So that is a quadratic equation factored and solved. We always want to put it back in ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. 
and I'm kind of probably taking for granted, well, I'm going to take for granted that this is logical to you. So, for example, if we now had the following, and we had x squared plus x is equal to 12, how do we deal with that? We bring the 12 to the left-hand side, x squared plus x minus 12 is equal to 0. We've got the form ax squared plus uh, bx plus c is equal to 0, and we can go ahead and solve. So this is solving factoring, that's factoring, and this is solving when the coefficient, the number in front of the x squared, is 1. In the next video, we'll look at it when it's not 1. So let's look at um, some problems. This one right here is the perfect scenario for us. What we've got here is x squared minus 25 is equal to 0. To solve this, there are no x terms, so we can simply add 25 to both sides x squared is equal to 25. Now the solution for x, if we square root both sides, x is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 25, and x is going to equal plus or minus 5. And this is key. If you are not confident with this, you must appreciate there's a positive and negative solution to this equation. If we graph this up, x squared minus 25 is symmetric about the y-axis, and it'll look something like this. This point here, although completely out of uh, scale, is 0, negative 25. That's the minimum point. We've got a solution here at uh, negative 5, 0, and we've got one here at positive 5, 0. And the reason is, if we think about this, this is going to give rise to the same value. If we took now a value here of uh, negative 7 and we took a value of positive 7, they're going to give the same y value. So if we're square rooting, we have to have a positive and a negative root. So we would say x is equal to plus or minus 5. Let's look at this one. 2x squared minus 72. If we're purely solving this, we can make this really quite straightforward. We're set to zero. We've got no x term, which means we don't have to factor it. All we've got to do is add the 72 to both sides. 2x squared is equal to 72. Divide both sides by 2. x squared is equal to 36. And x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 36, which is going to be uh, 6. Out of interest, this has simply got a scale factor stretch now of 2 parallel to the y-axis and has uh, been translated by a vector of minus uh, 0 minus 72. So it's been dropped down by 72 units. That's the ideal scenario. They're easy to solve. So fairly straightforward. This one is already factored. So all we'd have to do is consider these two linear factors. Either x minus 6 is equal to 0 or x plus 5 is equal to 0. So x would equal positive 6 or x would equal negative 5. And if we think, if you want to know what it's going to be, then all you've got to do is simply swap the signs. So x is positive 6 and x is negative 5. Let's look at this scenario. This is already factored. This one is factored. Now, x, 3x minus 2. This is simply saying to me that either x is equal to 0 or 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0, that's fine. There's one solution. Or 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. So just solving an easy linear equation, x is equal to 2 thirds. So we have two possible solutions to the quadratic, but x is equal to naught, or x is equal to uh, two thirds. And to draw this again would be fairly straightforward. We would get a parabola that is opening upwards. The parabola is simply the shape, the name of the shape of the graph. So let's draw this up now, and we're going to have something that looks like this. It goes through the origin with a zero zero there, and then we've got this solution here at two thirds comma zero and one here at zero. Okay. Let's look now at this one here. X squared minus X minus six. 
ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, so we need to factor it. Two numbers that multiply to give negative six and add to give negative one. x plus two, x minus three is equal to zero. This is now factored. I factored it. It was in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So x is equal to negative two, or x is equal to positive three. On the graph, this would have a minimum point of minus 6. So on the, um, the axis, it would cut at negative 6. Um, and we'll look at minimum points later. Let's look at this one right here. We've got no constant. There's no C term. So all we need to do is factor an X out of this one. We would have now X, 2X plus 3 is equal to 0. X is the common factor to both. We take that out, so x is equal to zero, or two x plus three is equal to zero. So if two x plus three is equal to zero, then two x is equal to negative three, and x is equal to negative three over two. Two solutions, like so. One thing you should not do here is the following. You should not write, this is wrong, two x squared, is equal to minus 3x. This is not correct. And then say, well, we can cancel an x. 2x is equal to minus 3. So therefore, x is equal to minus 3 over 2. If you divide out by an unknown variable, you are losing a solution. We've lost our solution at 0. We're not allowed to do that. So don't cancel out. If it's... Um, so, for example, on this one, we can divide this whole one by 2, okay? We can divide that by 2 straight away. I didn't, but you absolutely could do. This one, we can't because we need this solution here at 0 for one that we found earlier. Okay, so what's this one doing? This one's looking something like so. If you do this to it, you turn it into a linear, which we do not want. Okay. Let's look at this scenario right here. If we were asked to simply factor this and not solve it, then what we've got here, and we've got it here, and we've got it here, is the difference of two squares. Now, the difference of two squares goes as follows. If we were to factor this, we would have x plus 5 and x minus 5. This number in front is a square number, and this number is a square number, and there's the negative between them. The difference of two squares, x plus 5, x minus 5, and this is how this factors. So x would equal negative 5, or x would equal positive 5, as we saw earlier. This too is a difference of two squares. 4 is a square number, 25 is a square number, and there's a negative. So this would be 2x plus 5, 2x minus 5. With the solutions now being at x is equal to negative 5 over 2, or x is equal to positive 5 over 2, which we could write now as x is equal to plus or minus 5 over 2. Try not to write 2 and a half. 5 over 2 is a lot better if you're working with um, in your head, which a lot of time you will. Let's finish off with the following x squared minus 8 is equal to 2x. How are we going to solve this? This is an equation. I've introduced the sign, the equal sign, therefore it's an equation. The answer is we put it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So it becomes x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. This will now factor x plus 4. Uh, sorry, x plus 2 and x minus 4. They are the two numbers that multiply to give negative 8 and add to give negative 2. So our solutions are x is equal to negative 2 or x is equal to positive 4. And the final example, this is now moving on to a slight bit of AS, but more than capable of coming up at uh, GCSE. Is that a quadratic equation? That's the question. 
Remember, our definition of a quadratic is that the highest term of the power of x is 2. This doesn't seem to be. But if we multiply through by it for x here, we're going to get x squared minus 12 is equal to x by multiplying all through by the x. We rearrange x squared minus x minus 12 is equal to 0. This will now factor x plus 3 and x minus 4 is equal to 0. And our solutions, x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to 4. That was a hidden quadratic. And throughout your A-levels, you will see hidden quadratics everywhere. It looks like it's a linear equation or some form of something else. It certainly isn't. It's a quadratic. So that is the basic introduction to solving, well, factoring and solving basic quadratic equations where the coefficient is 1. Hopefully you knew the majority of that. And if you didn't or you forgot a slight bit, that's brushed up. And again, apologies if I've made any arithmetic errors in there, as I am prone to doing it, as I do most of it as on the go. So, there we go. In the next video, we'll look at some more taxing stuff, but hopefully that's given you the brief intro to quadratics.